Okay, so hi everybody. Uh, welcome to our very first guest speaker event of the semester. Uh, we're super excited to have Kelsey here. Um, and so uh, let's see, today we're, our we're talking about the job market in LinkedIn. So this is based around the trainee project for week three. Um, and we are very excited to hear from Kelsey. So uh, we will, it was oh, also just to give you an introduction, uh, Kelsey has been an intern with Superstition Review in the past. So she worked as a social media manager and then also was student editor in chief. So she was um, student editor in chief when I was first a trainee. So it's like a full circle moment. So super exciting to have you here. Uh, would you like to say anything else, Kelsey? Yeah, I mean, pretty much hit the nail on the head there. <laughs> I've been experienced in this internship. I stood about a year as an intern, and then, of course, the training semester. And I'm very excited to be here and talk to you all about LinkedIn today. Awesome. So this is going to be kind of Q&A style. I'll ask Kelsey some questions, have her share with us. And then at the end, we'd love to get some questions from um, all of you participants who are here as well. Um, so first off, Kelsey, would you start with um, just sharing your LinkedIn page, and then will you go over the main elements of the page and just describe your process as you've made that and like edited it over the years? Yeah, definitely. Give me one second to just like get the screen sharing. For sure. Set up. <laughs> okay, can everybody see that? It's looking good. Oh, good. Okay, awesome. <laughs> Always a little finicky sometimes. Um, so yeah, this is my basic uh what you see when you open my profile, like what I see from the editing side. So it looks a little different from um, the not editing side, but the main stuff. So you open to a banner, a profile picture, and then name, and then little like other stuff like workplace, a little byline here. So it's really similar to like other social media sites. Um, and then further down is where it starts to get a little bit more different. So up here, I don't know how much um, information trainees especially have had about this, but this like byline thing you can edit, it doesn't just go based on your current position that you have like listed later. So you can put whatever you want, sort of change that up, personalize it as you like. Um, I definitely recommend putting your college up here because then you'll start getting suggestions to connect with people from your college or from your specific schools. So I have Mary Lee Fulton Teachers College. I also have liberal arts and sciences. It just doesn't, it only shows one college up here for some reason. Um, so I get opportunities to connect with people from my classes and stuff like that. They kind of come up as my people you may know. Um, and then, so as you sort of scroll further down, this is private to your profile, so nobody else sees this, and it's sort of trying to suggest and help you um, as you're building your profile, so that's always useful to look at. And then you get to the about section, which, in my opinion, is one of the most important sections, because that's the thing that people, it's, it's close to the top, you know, potential employers or anything like that, or interviewers, that's something that they always go towards, so I would definitely, if you're going to focus on one thing above all else, I would put a lot of time into sort of writing and putting together your about section. So I sort of touch on, and I use up almost all the characters that are available, which if you can do that and still like be talking about important stuff, I would suggest doing that because it's always good to put more information about yourself out there. So I sort of uh, describe like what year I'm in, what I'm studying, my current employment situation. And then I sort of um, dip back into explaining like my internship with Superstition Review because that's been a lot of my experience in this field. And then sort of getting into a little bit more personal section down here in this third paragraph, which again, I would highly recommend because it gives you more than a resume, because a lot of people treat LinkedIn like a resume, which is fine. But the way you sort of set yourself above other potential candidates on LinkedIn is by adding that personal element that a resume alone doesn't allow for. So that's, and you don't want to get too personal, <laughs> sort of giving like your philosophy or something like that. So I kind of say something like, oh, like I've been involved in leadership. And I really like watching people like grow and helping them on a journey, which sort of like ties into my teaching interests. And then also like power of the written word. I'm a writer. So you want to make sure it sort of ties into your career interests and also what you're doing at the time. If, I, if anybody has any questions at any point, like definitely <laughs> cut me off and stop me <laughs> or redirect me, by the way. Um, so as you scroll down, this is just basic. Anybody can see this as well, your activity. So that, that if I clicked that, it's more like the social media aspect of LinkedIn. So that's like things that I've liked on my feed from like my connections or something like that. Or like if I've commented on anybody's post, it's that that shows up in the activity section. So then you get down here and this is what I was talking about when I said it's a lot like a resume in some sections. This is almost an exact copy of my actual resume. Um, and I kind of do it that way for consistency. So I have my you know, job title, place of employment, date of employment, 
all that same as a normal resume and then I have these bullets these are literally copy and pasted from my resume so that when I like submit a resume and my LinkedIn link to a job application it's consistent um, which is something that I always strive for is consistency across like social media platforms and any professional um, accounts or stuff like that's so, like my banner at the top that you saw earlier sorry for that fast scroll that's the same banner that's on my uh, portfolio website and then this is the same profile picture I use on all of my social media accounts so just like keep in mind consistency shows a little a little bit more professionalism than some people expect from college students that's for sure <laughs> Um, so as you go through and the great thing about LinkedIn is you can sort of trace back your work history. So I have all these different aspects, do a little bit of description when you've got something like superstition review, where you all sort of come in as like a trainee, you get to start that and you can see literally it marks out like a progress within the same entry through your role. So it's sort of like a promotionary thing, which is really nice. Um, and it automatically does that. You don't have to worry about like trying to code or <laughs> do anything to get it to look like that. And then of course, there's your education. Again, if you have like any activities you're a part of at, um, in college or even back like in high school or something, you can add those in. And again, it just sort of like adds more flavor and personality to your profile. And then um, skills and endorsements is a really important section. Again, really user-friendly. You just click add a new skill. It'll give you some suggested ones or you can like type in, search for some or even write your own. So it's, that is the thing about LinkedIn. It's a little scary looking at first, but it is very user-friendly in the long run. Um, and then you can actually endorse other people's skills. So this is another one of our past <laughs> student editor in chiefs endorsed me for social media when I was a social media manager. I endorsed her for something. So that's plays into the sort of networking aspect of LinkedIn. And so you want to go in and sort of highlight things. So like my experience as a social media manager for um, SR a few semesters back, I did a lot of social media and then also like graphic design, media creation, that sort of thing. So a lot of these skills um, that I developed there, I highlight in my profile here. And then just like other skills from other jobs or other positions at SR that I've had. Um, definitely don't skimp on highlighting <laughs> your skills. This is the place to do it. And then of course, recommendations, which um, it's really handy to give each other recommendations, you know, as you sort of build relationships through this internship or training period, it's nice to be able to reach out to somebody and be like, hey, I'll write your recommendation if you write me one. And that's <laughs> what happened for both of the ones I have here. And they're really nice to like buff out your profile. And then last but not least, um, there's like the accomplishments, oh, excuse me, accomplishment section down here um, where I'm sure like a lot of you are writers or something and do sort of like blog posts or creative writing or anything like that. If you have any publications, this is a great place to list them. Languages, there's a bunch of like honors stuff. Like you just hit this plus and there's a bunch of different things, categories that you can add your awards to or accomplishments to. And that's always, again, add some flavor to your profile. I think that's that's like the basic run through of of the LinkedIn profile with some tips that I've sort of come across as I've been um, working on mine for a few years. For sure, yeah, and we can really tell. Thank you. That was a great overview. Um, I especially like how you said that a LinkedIn can be more personal than just a resume um, with all of the personal detail that you added in, like in your about section. And I especially love your um, banner that you've made yourself. Um, because it stands out so much more than just like the basic ones that you can put on there or <laughs> whatever pictures online. So that was super cool. Um, so can you share a bit more about what skills you've learned or uh, you learned like at your time at Superstition Review um, and maybe how some of those are shown on your LinkedIn profile? I understand that they're listed, of course, like under the Superstition Review section, but maybe um, other places besides that, that those might be shown here? Yeah, definitely. Um, so obviously, like you were saying, there's that like listing of the skills, but I also, um, when I was interning at Superstition Review, so now I currently have like a position somewhere else. So I focused on like what I do in that position, but when I was interning at Superstition Review, I sort of added my responsibilities for when I was a social media manager or blog editor or SEC when I had each of those positions, I would sort of pick like three of the things that I did. Three is a really good number for <laughs> writing online and listing things like that because it's like not too long, not too short. So that's kind of the same thing I did with my current position. So you can list stuff up there. And then I actually, when you come down here and add details about each of your positions, that's where I try and highlight it. Um, so let me like expand one of these. So it's similar to like resume writing, how you kind of want to fine tune your points. So you don't want to just be like, for social media, you don't want to just be like, 
I used the Instagram every day. So it's like, cause that's, that, that doesn't really like upsell yourself, but also like, instead of saying that I said like perform daily interactions on the magazine, social media accounts. So that not only shows that like I was like doing the job of a social media manager, but also that I have a high enough understanding to sort of like use the, the proper lingo, I guess is what, is what we could call it. Um, so it's not just like went on Facebook and liked post, it's performing interactions. It's not just like, oh, promoted another like literary magazine. It's created an executed promotional campaign. So it's, that's where you can sort of, I would say like humble brag might be the right way to say it, sort of subtly um, show off your knowledge and understanding of the area that you are working in and have experience in by describing what you did. Yeah, I think that humble brag is a good way of saying it because, hey, you've got the skills, show them off. Um, so for all of our trainees and interns, we're all, um, all going to have a chance later on in the semester to work on our resumes. That's the final project. So um, working on those action statements is something that we'll definitely have time to work on later in the semester. But while you're creating or um, revamping your LinkedIn right now, this is a great place to practice those if you don't already have them on your LinkedIn. Um, and then I really liked your point, Kelsey, about like picking three main things that you um, like did in your position, because uh, I just want us to see how we can write about the roles that we're a part of right now and also keep those like on our LinkedIn page, even as we move on to new roles, we can still keep all those skills and everything still highlight those um, so that people can see what you've done in the past. So that's awesome. Um, and so for this next part, you're welcome to like still screen share your LinkedIn if there's anything that you um, can visually share, but it just depends on whatever, um, you know, how it goes. But basically, how has your LinkedIn been an asset when applying for jobs? Yeah, definitely. So I would say, give me one second. I'm going to stop screen sharing this and screen share something else if I can like minimize. Okay. I don't screen share a lot in Zoom meetings, if you can't tell. <laughs> uh, no worries. I'm usually an observer. I have my resume actually. So the thing that I do that I would recommend a lot of you do, um, whether now, like if you already have a resume, can you see what I'm pulling up? It, no, it just looks like the screen is falling away. So you might need to stop sharing and then reshare. Let's see if I can get this to work. Is that better? Yes. Sorry for technical difficulties. <laughs> Thank no you. Um, so as I was saying, so one thing I'd recommend you do, so this is like the resume that you submit online or you would hand to somebody, which like doesn't really happen anymore, but you submit it online. At the very bottom, I have my LinkedIn profile URL and then as well as my portfolio, but I would definitely suggest putting your LinkedIn profile um, on your resume. I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing now because that was basically just what I wanted to show. Okay. Um, putting that on there because like that alone, just seeing that even if your interviewer or potential employer doesn't even like go to your LinkedIn, showing that you have one that you're willing to promote and are proud of to like put it on your resume, that already puts you ahead of especially other college students, but even like after you graduate, other adults who haven't ventured into LinkedIn or like don't have like they have like a profile with like their name, but nothing else on it. So that really kind of like sets you up. And then if your employer, potential employer does choose to go and look at it, having like a really buffed out profile there, again, shows that you're a professional, shows that you're taking it seriously and shows that you're tech savvy, which like huge, especially after the pandemic, it's huge to like know what's going on and be on top of like professional workplace technology trends. Um, and so I've had not my current employer, actually, I don't know if my current employer actually looked at my LinkedIn, but um, past like freelance jobs that I've done with freelance photography and editing. I've had a couple of those people who employed me actually tell me that they did come look at my LinkedIn after I submitted my resume. And that part of it was that they could tell I put effort into it, which made them feel more sure about hiring me because they could tell I was gonna, like, if I was gonna put effort into like promoting myself like that and that own sort of thing, they were like, oh yeah, you'll definitely put effort into what you're being paid to do. Um, so that I think it just, it shows like a level of professionalism that is not matched by a lot of our peers, which is unfortunate, but also fortunate for you because you all are gonna know how to do this by the end of the semester. Yeah, I think that's a great way of putting it. Um, 
like you said, LinkedIn is super user friendly. Like it takes some time to figure out what's going on. But once you do figure it out, it makes you look like a super pro. Like if you've got a really great buffed up profile, like Kelsey's been saying. So um, definitely put you ahead of the curve. So it's awesome to hear that people have actually, you know, employers have looked at that and given you good feedback on that. So that's awesome to hear. Uh, and then so how are the skills that you gained at Superstition Review assisting you in your current position where you work now? Yeah, so um, I currently work at Hayden Library on Tempe campus um, in the Map and Geospatial Hub. I'm sure most of you don't know what that is because you're not geography majors. It's basically a map archive and then we do like digital collections and stuff. Um, so I actually didn't think I would use a ton of my like hard skills, like especially my social media and editing skills in that position because doesn't seem like the kind of place you'd use that, but actually because of my experience at SR, um, both as like the blog editor for one summer and then social media manager, having those skills and sort of being able to talk about that and explain that, um, my supervisor actually sort of like didn't promote me because it wasn't a promotion, but sort of like added different responsibilities to help with public outreach um, about our resources. And so for that, I write monthly blog posts, sort of showing off some of our collection. I work with our limited social media presence just because it's under the umbrella of ASU Library, so we don't have like a bunch of social media, but I run the little social media that we do have. Um, I help with like event promotion when we have our events and that sort of thing. And so that's been really beneficial, especially the blog part too. I was only the blog editor for like two and a half, three months over one summer. And that position like made me grow a lot as, as a writer and an editor. Um, but that has come in so handy. That's probably been like the most, the, the experience I've drawn on the most in this position. And then sort of on a softer skill side, I will say I was thinking about this just today actually, cause I was like, what am I gonna talk about for this point <laughs> in the meeting? And I was writing a bunch of emails today. And I was like, you know, being able to just like write a really concise and clear email and just send it without having to stress over if it's like well-written is so much better because I used to sit there and agonize over emails and be like is this too friendly is it not friendly enough am I being too pushy and so now being able to like have like eight emails that I need to send out within an hour I can just sort of like slam through them and not like in a formula way but just sort of like confident in my own understanding of how to do that so that's just like one of the one of the soft skills you sort of pick up in SR. <laughs> That's awesome because I remember when you gave us a presentation about emails when I was a trainee and like I I remember that I think about that when I'm sending emails wow. for this position and I'm like okay there's not too many exclamation points right like I don't need to be that excited about everything I'm like remembering what you said to us so that's I I feel like you were a pro so you're already a pro at that point in time so that's cool um, and then yeah, like you said about your um, current position, it's great to hear how uh, by bringing in those skills that you've learned in the past, you're getting to expand on your current role. So even though you didn't like sign up to be working on the blog, particularly, you've gotten to add that based on your past experience. And so getting to do more of the things that you are you know, passionate about doing. So that's awesome as well. Um, and then let's see, you already shared a lot of great stuff about LinkedIn with us and like tips and everything, but do you have any other last tips to share in regard to LinkedIn, um, like using LinkedIn while applying to jobs, anything related to what we've talked about? Yeah, I think um, definitely for trainees, my biggest suggestion would be to like find some time, carve out like an hour, an hour and a half. I know it sounds like a lot of time and I know you're busy, but just find some time now at the start of the semester and do it and just get on LinkedIn and see what's going on there, kind of start, start to build your understanding of it. So even if you don't have a lot to put on there now, like you can't like fill up like four column, four rows worth of experience stuff because you haven't done the internship yet or something like that. Just, just get on there and get a foundation built because when you add experience, it's so much easier to go in and like throw in like four sentences about your new position as opposed to having to go and build the whole thing from the ground up. Um, and then also like going on and interacting, I would say for um, interns and trainees, you know, don't just use it as like a, like a living resume sort of situation, go on and treat it like social media, because it is a social media, it's, it's this weird 
in between of social media and resume land, um, which is kind of why some people don't like it. They don't really get up. So get in and, and interact like it is social media. So go on your feed and, you know, start liking people's posts, liking people's job updates, commenting, that sort of thing. And then go on and like follow hashtags that you're interested in. So like I follow like editing hashtags or whatever. And then if you're in the market for a job or a part-time position or anything, go on. There's a way to, oh shoot, did I turn out? Okay, I didn't turn off my link, then I'll screen share again and show you guys how to do it. Um, there is a way to go on and sort of open yourself up to new jobs or like job offers. So it's just at the bottom, you're open to finding a new job or hiring, for so you'll want to click finding a new job and you can go in there and sort of filter it and be like, I want part-time work, I want full-time work, I want remote, I want in-person, I want in this area. And that's something I found like my freelance work, a lot of it came from LinkedIn. Um, and being able to sort of like interact with people through there and then also just like seeing how other people post on LinkedIn so if you're even if you're not going to post a lot because I don't post a lot mostly because I don't have a lot to post about on LinkedIn I'm not like a CEO who's like oh our company just got this much more money or whatever like we, we, I that's not what I do <laughs> but I see what people are posting so that when I do have something to post like a job update or sort of putting myself out there for freelance work I know sort of the way to write that kind of post, you want to sort of get a feel for the vibe of LinkedIn. And I think it's definitely better to do that before you need to seriously get on and use it, as opposed to sort of scrambling at the last second to figure out how to use it. So I guess my, my biggest piece of advice would be just to get in there and get to know it. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I think that's a big goal of a lot of what we're working on in this internship and training period is just getting you set up for success. So the more time you spend on this now, the, the easier it will be for you to just edit it in the future and then use it for those opportunities that we've talked about. So um, that, those were all of um, the topics that I had planned for us to talk about. Thank you, Kelsey. Yeah, of course. And so now it would be awesome to hear some questions from everybody else. Does any, um, you're welcome to unmute yourself and ask a question or send it in the chat. Um, Kelsey, I was wondering if you um, linked your portfolio in your LinkedIn. I did, yes. Thank you for reminding me. That is, I meant to talk about that. Um, I'll screen share one more time. I did, it's, you can't see it on this back end but it will appear like on, on like the, the viewers end, it appears right here. And then if you wanna see it and double check that it's linked, you can see it under contact info for you. So that's where I have, so you just put it under website um, and it gives like a hyperlink to it. So the person can just click on it, go view it um, and then hop right back over. But yeah, so it's in you, to do that, you go into this little editing. So not this one, cause this is for the banner, but this little editing icon. And see, so this is where you can like edit your byline, pronouns, position, any of that sort of thing. Um, and it's under contact info, profile URL website, edit under there. That's where you, you can put it in. It asks like what kind of a website it is. So if you have a blog, link your blog, you know, something like that. Um, I don't put my phone number on here. That's a personal choice, your personal call. Um, same thing with address, but I do have my email address linked. So that's sort of where you would do that if you have something to link like that. And, I would, and if you have like a, what is happening here? <laughs> Sorry. Um, if you have something to link like a blog or a portfolio, link it, you know, why not? It's always a good thing to have more information up on LinkedIn. And then same thing with the banner. I meant to tell you where I made that. You can go on canva.com. I don't know if any of you have ever used Canva before, but I made this in probably like 10 minutes. And that's why I sat there and like fussed around with fonts <laughs> for most of that 10 minutes. Um, it's really easy to use if you want to sort of like bring a little bit more graphics to your profile. So thank you for that question. That was a really good question. Thank you. Yeah, and Canva is awesome. So, and that's super easy to use as well. Um, and so Patrick asks, hi, Kelsey, what made you want to take the internship course with Superstition Review? Ooh, that is a good question that I have not thought about for a while. I got to think back. I was a freshman actually, um, and the SEC, I think it was Leanne Ammerman, which I don't think any of you know her, she's graduated, <laughs> Trish knows her. Uh, she came into my like beginning fiction workshop and talked about it. And I was actually a journalism major at the time, journalism and creative writing. And I was like, oh, I could use some of my skills I'm learning in journalism at this internship because I was learning a bit about social media and content creation at the time. So I was like, I'll apply. 
you know, and I was like, you know, I'd like to look into careers in English and creative writing that aren't just writing, you know, because I think there's a bigger community out there that I was interested in seeing. Um, applied, got into the training program, was super excited, and then ended up actually that semester while I was in that program changing my journalism major to education. <laughs> but we don't talk about that. Uh, so I actually, during that training period, I was like, so excited by the chance to like develop the existing skills that I had with like social media content creation, but also to like build all these really important skills that I hadn't had the chance to build ever before. And so even just the training alone helped a lot with that and just like getting a better understanding, not just of um, like the, the English creative writing literary world, but also just like the professional world in general. Um, and that was a really great opportunity that I was so excited to have. So that's why I continued to do the internship course in the spring and then came back to be SEC in the fall as well because I really just did enjoy the the chance to sort of like get into professionalism with a little bit of guidance as opposed to just getting thrown into it after graduating. Yeah, I think that's a great point that you made about getting into the professional world but still with some supervision because it's it's like a confidence booster to be emailing all these important people I feel like like that's how I felt when I was content creator last semester um I was like wow I I know this author I am like a fan of her and wow I'm just like emailing her now to say like if she wants me to edit anything in here you know it's crazy but um it's a good experience to have and definitely something that you can carry on no matter what your role is uh, let's see. And then Itosha asks, hi, Kelsey, do you think that it would be appropriate to list that we are currently training at Superstition Review as experience? Absolutely. Yes, I would definitely list. I mean, I have mine listed. Granted, um, I'm being a bad LinkedIn example for this part because I don't have like bullet points underneath it. That is because my current resume, I don't have it listed just because I keep my resume to one page. So I focused on my internship positions. But like definitely go in and like you don't have to be like I trained to be this like you can you can get in there and be like oh like I'm trying to think of trying to focus on one of the exact projects it's been a while since I did the training program. <laughs> um, but like for this project or something sort of like oh yeah like developed LinkedIn profile and explore job market by I think it's like this is the project where you guys look for job offers okay <laughs> making sure. Um, be like oh like explored. Uh, job offers on indeed or something like that and like just like built up professional interest it's you can you can go in and sort of like elaborate on it so that it's not just like what is it where it is on mine where it's just like internship training <laughs> for six months do better than i did but yes i would definitely put it on your linkedin now and then keep it there as well because it shows like an extra five or six months that you've been working at like the same company for sure any other questions Okay, well, if there are no other questions, um, then thank you so much for coming, Kelsey, and we really appreciate your time and getting to talk to you. Of course, I'm really glad to come in and be able to talk to you guys. Good luck on this project for the trainees, and then same for interns. Good luck with building your guys' profiles. It's going to be great. Absolutely, and don't forget to follow us on or like connect with us on LinkedIn. Yes. Both Kelsey and I will be expecting those from everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll stop recording.